poll that we've been running on the RTE Soccer Twitter account. The question was about Man City. Uh, was it an appropriate punishment for City if they breached financial uh, fair play rules? What was the appropriate punishment? Uh, the people have spoken. This is what they think. 10% say none, that FFP is flawed. 34% say UEFA's two-season ban. 31% think they should be stripped of their titles from 12 to 16. And 25% of you say sell the club to the Gallagher brothers, to Liam and Noel. OK, well, if you were with us on two earlier on, you will have seen Atletico Madrid beat Liverpool by a goal to nil in the first leg of their round of 16 tie. Let's hear from the Liverpool manager, Jurgen Klopp. Jürgen, you knew it was going to be a tough test. Did that early goal, basically, was that an invitation for everything you, you worried about? Yeah, it's clear you got, <laughs> that's not exactly what, what should happen, but it happened. So, apart from that, uh, it was the fight we, we, we expected, it was the atmosphere we expected, and um, but I loved so many parts of our game, uh, really, to be honest. So, first and foremost, it's half time, we are 1 0 down, and we don't only play a second half, we played in our stadium, which is obviously completely different to, to, to this stadium here. Um, and Build-up was exceptional. Counter-press was exceptional. What we, we lacked, of course, um, yeah, in, 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 a, in the final third, I would say, to be clear enough, uh, they defended with all they had. So the, their defending in the box was incredible, to be honest. So we had moments, we came through, and then we didn't hit the balls clear. But that's how it is in a game like this. You, when you are one 0 down against a team like this, they only wanted to have this result, this kind of result. Nil-nil would have been okay for them, and that's then difficult. And so we take it like it is. All good. Second leg. I'm looking forward to it. Just a couple of things to Sadio Mane. Did you take him off at half time because he was being targeted or was he injured? No, he was targeted, obviously. Yeah? So that was clear. Sadio played a really good first half, and the only thing they wanted is to make sure he got a yellow card. So it's difficult after the game. We lost. That's not. I said, we, and for me, we didn't lose. We had only it's only half time. So we, it's the, the the score is is one nil. That's all. Um, but you need. To be really strong as a ref in, the, in this atmosphere, that was obviously not easy. Huh? So, so many things happened today. I think after 30 minutes, already three players of them were on the ground just um, for um, let give me a little breath or what. I don't know. Nothing happened, and this was obviously the first yellow card got a striker from us in this game. I'm not sure they got even a yellow card. Though. That's really funny. Um, but um, yeah, so nobody to blame. I, I, I'm how I said I'm fine. It's we are one 0 down half time. We have the longest half time. Break you can wish for. We will use that and play again. But you got a yellow card as well in your frustration, and your counterpart was dancing in and out of his technical area, possibly on the pitch at times. Which I is an... my yellow card. I have no clue if if Diego would have deserved one as well. I have no idea, but um, yeah, it was too much in in moments. So and there are so many clear. The, the, I'm pretty sure. What was it? A throw in for us before they scored the goal. <laughs> so and then on our side was the next throw in was was clear for us, and that I saw that better. That doesn't help to stay calm, obviously. Um, and then they scored a goal, so how can that happen? Um, but yeah, we are all human beings make mistakes, that's it. And, and clear up the injury, injury to Jordan Henderson, that looked a bit worrying. He felt a hamstring. Mm, I hope it was still precaution, but I'm not 100% sure. We have to see. And you, your counterpart, Diego Simeone, who's stirring up the crowd tonight. It's a big atmosphere. Are you going to. Yeah. I have to say, wow, wow, but that's energy. Yeah. Are you going to do that at Anfield? I don't think I have to do it that much, to be honest. I hope I can be focused a little bit more on the game. That would be nice. Our people will be ready, I know that. And, um, yeah, welcome to Anfield. It's not over yet. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, it certainly isn't uh, over yet, and I think he's right. He doesn't have to stir up the crowd at Anfield. They will be ready in a few weeks' time. Um, Kevin, he's still smiling, but do you think... Is he a bit rattled there? No, I just think he, he's desperate to play that. He's saying it's going to be the longest half-time break. It's three mm. weeks before the, the next leg. Um, I think he just wants to go out and have another go at them and, and win the game. As he said, he can't wait to get them to Anfield. He said, he's a great interview. Um, the way he said that, we, I don't need to get my crowd G'd up. They'll be G'd up themselves. And he's right, Anfield will be rocking. And um, you know what? It'll be a tough night. Atletic are so professional at the way to do it. And you know, those frees and fouls and yellow cards and to argue every decision and to try charm the referee. They're just good at what they do. But... You just think going to Anfield, Liverpool, they're European champions for a reason. Um, they'll have enough to, to claw back. It won't be easy. They'll have to take their chances. They missed a couple tonight. Um, I still think they have enough to win that game. Was he right, Richie, to have a go at the referee? 
Well, that was his opinion. Um, I don't think he used any phrases that'll get himself in trouble, so that was the no, main No, no, I know. But yeah, was he right to have a go? Would you be critical of the referee? No, I, I don't think there was, there was a, a, anything specific he did. I mean, the bookings were probably justified. I think ah, I, yeah. I don't answer your yeah, question. Now, lot, is he rattled? Lot, you you were saying there, like I think yeah. he's he, he, he's pumped, which is how you should be after being in a stadium like that on a night like that with that atmosphere and those those kind of challenges because it it winds you up watching the opposition delaying on the ground, mm. you know all those tactics that that kind of gets to you and it's an exercise in self control when you're on the pitch not to react. And I think it was a sensible decision at half time, as annoyed as he was to have to have done it or that he annoyed as he was that the behaviour led to Mane being booked, mm. he was right to take him off because... He was he targeted? He even said it. Well, you, you, had he stayed on the pitch in the second half, absolutely he would have been the focal point of a lot of skullduggery from those Atletico players. Banker. That absolutely would have happened. But that's what happens in football. That's, it's not unique to no. Diego Simeone-managed teams that you would think that there's an advantage here to be sought by honing in on one player in the hope that he gets booked because it's a massive advantage mm. to play against 10 men. Liam? Uh, well, you know, I thought it was, uh, as, as Kevin said, it was a good interview. He's mm. honest, isn't he? He's always honest. He's, uh, he's a very, very likeable coach, isn't yeah. he? He doesn't come on and make excuses and things no. like that. I did think the re he was annoyed. He was frustrated with the referee because they were play-acting. They were pretending they were injured and so on. They weren't injured at all. And... Uh, they, he lost his cool. So did some of the Liverpool players. If they're going to put this game right, they have to be careful with their temperament because they will be riled again by uh, the Atletico tactics uh, at Anfield and they've got to keep their cool. Mm, they certainly do. OK. Um, can we thank you for all your messages in for our panel? We've just got a few of them here. Uh, first of all, I have one from Sean Doyle, and it's connected to Liverpool. Uh, Sean says, what area, if any, could Liverpool improve in? Who would they see as a good fit if contracts or money was no obstacle come the transfer window? Who wants that first? Where can Liverpool improve? Um, the start of living is so strong. Who are you going to replace? The front three, you can't really improve on. I think, um, you know, in that game when everyone's sitting behind the ball to have a cr more creative midfielder, but it costs a lot of money. I said money's no yeah, object money's in no the object. question, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. Some uh, creative midfielder, but... You know, it doesn't suit them in other games. How are you going to spend that much money to sign someone good enough to make a difference when you're going to leave them on the bench a lot of the time for the way Liverpool play and their counter-attacking team? They don't need a creative midfielder at times. So I don't know how they can improve on it. Maybe another centre-half to go by beside Virgil van Dijk. Gomez has been very good, but yeah. they could have another top centre-half. But, you know, all over the pitch, they're very strong. Money, no object. Who would you... De Bruyne. Kevin De Bruyne. <laughs> yeah, OK. <laughs> yeah. Same. Yeah. Money may not be an object there. Yeah, yeah he could he be gets, available. He, he gets a goal from... He gets lots of goals from outside the box and things like that. Who would you take out of the team, then? Well, probably uh, Henderson. You the know. player of the year we were talking about him earlier. Well, he wasn't my player of the year. <laughs> Fair he was point. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, but it's a squad game now, yeah. isn't it, Darry? You know, so if there was one player out there, I would say Kevin De Bruyne. OK, all right. Um, let's go on to well, a Premier League one in general. This is from Gavin Brady. And again, Gavin, thank you for your tweet. He says, do you think the standard of the Premier League is as bad as it's ever been? City not good enough, Chelsea poor, United poor, Arsenal poor, Spurs poor. Uh, Gavin says, I can't remember the league ever being as bad as it is at the minute. And that would be apart from the side that are leading by 25 points. Yeah, I think he's right. I was actually scribbling the same note. It's to poorest certainly position and, and quality of squad that United have had United have had in the Premier League era. Mm -hmm. Arsenal are at their lowest position that they've been in for years and Chelsea aren't in they're in the weakest position that they've been in years. Um I, I, I don't know, is it a sign that the Premier League is weak that we have a team which is as good, like better than anything we've ever seen before. Like, are they just an exceptional team? Or, you know, we, we have discussed previously in other leagues, in other countries, if there was a team leading by 25 points, we'd be sitting here going, that's a terrible league. I still think if, if those other teams were strong, Liverpool would be still yeah. um, top of the league. They've won the Champions League last year. Man City were excellent last year, they're not great this year, but Liverpool are just a step ahead. If Man United were strong, I still think, you know, I think Liverpool have it clicked at the moment. Um, it's not as competitive as it was, but Leicester won the league a couple of years ago. It wasn't very competitive that year either. I think it's, it's cyclical. All those teams will come back strong again. Um, they're all making changes. They're all building. But I still think this Liverpool squad at this moment in time would, 
would top any of those um, with, with, uh, with better squads and better I mean, Man United, better managers in their case. I think mm. Liverpool still are, are strong enough to win the league. In, in fair, it, is, it is a phrase that we, like, we've used it and we've heard it loads of times in this studio over the years, so, like Germany or Italy. If there's ever a team that's dominating, we from a, from a distance we, we, we make a call and say, no, it's not a competitive league, it's a weak league. A, a, a decent league doesn't have one team in a position I, I, of some strength. I watched strength, a couple so. of games at the weekend. I watched Arsenal against Newcastle uh, and it was a terrible first half and Arsenal went on and won comfortably in the... Newcastle were terrible. Yeah. They were absolutely terrible there. As, uh, Aston Villa against Spurs. Uh, Mourinho was livid that they weren't winning and it took a, a horrendous mistake yeah. by the Aston Villa centre-back. Uh, the, the, the standard of the teams, I agree with my namesake, is it Gavin Mr Brady? Brady yeah, yeah I, I agree with it. It Related is the weakest no? league, and Richie's touched upon it. Yeah. Uh, Manchester United, not the team they were a couple of years ago. Arsenal certainly aren't. Spurs, OK, they've got a lot of injuries at the moment, particularly Harry Kane being out uh, gives, them, gives them a problem. Uh, Chelsea trying to build a side, not really spending any money. I would say Gavin is absolutely mm. right. It is the weakest it's been for a long time. And the fact Liverpool have played how many games? So many games. They've mm. only drawn one and they've yeah. won all the others. And I think that tells the story. It's 25 and out of 26. Man City may fall back into that group yeah. of big clubs who aren't really in a position of strength anymore if the ban sticks. Well, even the way they're playing this exactly. season, Richie, yeah. they're not the same, are they? Yeah. You know. And closing that gap mm. won't be something City will be able to do effectively if the ban mm. is upheld and players leave or the big players don't arrive. Liam mentioned Spurs there. Last uh, message from Darren McQuarrie. Uh, and it's about Tottenham, well, well, about their manager and Troy Parrott. What did the panel think about Mourinho's comments regarding Troy Parrott not being ready for the first team? He said this again, Harry Kane is out, Son is out, and he said, his exact quotes are, my thoughts are that Troy Parrott is not ready. They've just recently given him a three-year contract. Um, Mick McCarthy was saying he wanted to, hopefully, to see him get a loan to start going out and playing and all that stuff. He's now at the ripe old age of 18. Mm -hmm. um, but Mourinho's saying he's not ready. Is that just a... <laughs> Take he's, the pressure off the ladder, stop people... Well, he's consistently said that, but he's had opportunities that... No, I, I, think, he, I think he believes that. If your question was about to go, is he just saying this to... to no, no, to, but... Yeah, no, but because I think he means it, because there's mm. been opportunities to put a striker on the bench um, if you believe the striker was good enough, because yeah. there'd be shorter strikers recently. Um, and Son's injury now means he's unavailable for a while, so... I genuinely think Marino absolutely believes it. Um, and I think I, I wouldn't be critical of Parrot signing a contract at a club, even though the manager's come out and said, you know, he's, he's a long way off at the moment. Yeah. Going out on loan is great in principle, but there's not many. The reason you go out on loan is if you can be guaranteed first team football and someone who's 18 with as little experience of, you know, professional first team sure. football isn't going to get that guarantee in many places. So. On paper, send them out loan, toughen them up, get them experience, but it's trickier to find a manager out there who's going to guarantee playing a kid in first-team mm. football. Like I suppose from, from an Irish point of view, we just want to see this guy. We can see the, the raw talent, senior international already. We just want to see this guy playing yeah, first-team football. You have to remember he's only 18, um, but he, he does look the part when we've seen him play the under-21s. He's made his international debut. But we don't see him every day. We don't see him in training with the first yeah. team at Spurs. We don't know what he's like. He might be, you know, find it very difficult there. And, and Jose Mourinho is maybe trying to protect him by not throwing him into the deep end. But if you're, and Jose Mourinho doesn't give young players chances historically, you'd have to be exceptional. It wouldn't give you confidence if you're trying to reading these comments. You know, they're mm -hmm. desperate for a striker. At least put me on the bench. Um, you know, we don't have any striker here. Whatever. But he, he's still a, I suppose, a player who's in and around his international squad. So mm -hmm. he's someone he should be if he has any faith in him at all, should have him on his bench or, or talking about him a bit more positively, saying, yeah. listen, he might be ready in a few months, he's not ready right now. It, it's, it's hard as a young player, especially, to take those comments from him and gain yeah. anything from it, apart from he has no belief in me yeah. and I have no future at this club. But, but I would assume that the private conversations are, are lengthier and yeah. Yeah. more And he's still got a three-year contract from the club. Yeah, and he'll, he'll, he'll put a bit of meat on the bones of yeah. those comments. Like, you'd, you'd, you know... It's, Part of your manager's job as a manager is to nurture younger talent sure. and either 
convince them that patience is the right thing or that they have a future or that there's specifics they need to work on. Yeah. You don't just leave a player out, you often leave them out and explain what they need to do to bridge the gap yeah. between where they are and where they think they should be. So um, I would assume mm. Troy is hearing more than simply reading the quotes from Mourinho. What about, uh, Liam, just to finish, you know, in terms of the, the, the squad for the playoff, would you expect to see Troy Parrott in there? It's not if he's not playing. Yeah, if he's if only he's playing, playing under 23 football or yeah. whatever, reserve football, I don't think Mick will pick him. Uh, and I think there's maybe a couple of lads who are ahead of him now. Alba Femi at mm -hmm. uh, Southampton's getting yeah. a, quite a bit of game time. Um, I, I think the lad needs to go on loan. I know Richie said it's not always guaranteed that you're going to play, but sometimes... You know, clubs will ring up and you'll say, well, I, I, you know, you'll do a kind of a, a trade with them to say, look, if we're going to give, it, give you the lad on loan, he's got to be playing yeah. and managers will give some kind of guarantee. Yeah. So I really think that lad needs to go out and play maybe championship at some level. Mm. OK, very good. Thanks, man. That's all we have time for. Uh, thank you to Richie, Liam and Kevin for the company here in studio. We will see you all again soon. Bye-bye. <laughs>